Facebook catalog campaigns allow you to customize your audiences and ad creative based on the products that people have engaged with on your website. But you might not want to always advertise all products to all audiences. Maybe you want to advertise only a small collection to a certain audience. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to create a product set and apply it to an ad set so you can make sure that you're controlling only the products that you want to advertise to that specific audience. Once you're in Facebook Business Manager, to create product sets, we need to go to the Catalog Manager. So I'm going to come over here into the main Business Tools menu. And depending on how recently you've been in Catalog Manager, it might show up here in your shortcuts. But if not, it's going to be all the way down here at the bottom, second to last. Once you land in Catalog Manager, come over to Catalog, open up the menu, and click on Sets. And that'll put you right where I am right now. As a quick overview of what's on this tab within the Catalog Manager, first thing over here, kind of toward the left, is going to be a white box that eventually will house any of the product sets you've created. Right now, it only has Shopify Dynamic Facebook Ads product set listed because that's the default product set that we have in this account. So there's only going to be one listed here if you haven't created any yet. But as time goes on, when you create different ones, you'll be able to easily navigate to them and it'll build out this full list over here on the left. Next, you'll be able to see any policy violations. Obviously, we have a few here, but this is just a placeholder account, so it doesn't really matter. Then down below, or what will be up here at the top, if you don't have any policy violations, will be all of the different products that you have in your catalog. So that's going to be the main portion of this page. To get started creating product sets, I'm guessing that you already can see where I'm going with this. We're going to come up here to the blue button on the top right and click Create Set. When that opens, you'll see that there are two different options for how you can create a product set. The first is to use filters, and the second is to manually select items. We're going to spend most of our time going through a couple of examples of how to use the filters, because manually selecting items, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory when we get there. So let's go ahead and click Use Filters. So before I get too far into this, I want to show you which filters you can use, and then we're going to hop back into the product set, and I'm going to show you where that information comes from. So skipping for a second the name and the conditions piece here, I'm going to come down to this category drop down. I'm going to open it up. These are going to be all the filters you can use to create your different product set. We have category, product type, brand, price, current price, product, item group ID, gender, condition, size, age group, color, material, pattern, a series of custom labels, name, and availability. All of these are going to be different values tied to individual products, and similar to how we would create an audience or something along those lines, you can then filter out different products based on these conditions. So let's hop back into the product set and I'll show you where these come from. I've gone ahead and clicked on an individual product within the product feed for this account. And here we can start to see some of those values we just saw that were available for filter. You can see title, availability, item group ID, price, product type, there's a description, and then there's also this view more fields here down at the bottom. If you click that and open it up, you'll notice that lots of those different pieces are here. Now we can see condition, brand, all sorts of different things that are available in here. So all of the information that we're going to use for those filters comes from your product feed. This is my little mini rant about how important your product feed is and how descriptive it can be. Make sure all of the information that you want to use or leverage around this specific product or any individual product set is included in the information about these products. It needs to live somewhere in these fields if you want to be able to use these filters to create product sets to advertise. If not, you're going to have to go the manual route, and depending on how many products you have that will go in each set, that can take quite a long time to put together. So spend a little bit of time in your Shopify account, whatever you're using to import your catalog into Facebook, and make sure that all the information is in these fields if it can be. Okay, stepping down off my soapbox, let's head back up and start to create that product set using filters again. For right now, I'm gonna start off giving this product set a placeholder name of what I know the end result is gonna be, but we're gonna walk through a couple of examples before we get there. I just don't want it to throw an error while I'm doing the rest of the video. Okay, so the first thing we can start to do like I said earlier, is to use some of these different filters based on how we want to put together a product set. So let's say we want to do something that has a price that is under $500. We can come down here, click on price. Then in the second dropdown, we can start to choose different values, whether it's greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. So for this example, let's do is less than. 
then type in our amount of 500. You can choose the currency if that needs to be different. For right now, we'll leave it as US dollars. And now all of the products have been filtered. We've gone down from 695 products down to 215. So there are 215 that are below $500 in this account. Let's say we wanna filter even more and say that we don't want anything that is a gift card. You can then add a secondary field to further narrow your product set. And since I know this is actually the name of the product, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, come down here all the way to the bottom and find name. Then I'm gonna change my value. It starts off as name is, but you can use is, is not, contains, does not contain, or starts with. So I'm gonna say does not contain. Then when we come up to the name, you'll notice that when I click into this field, there will be some preset options that pop up here. Sometimes Facebook gives you a handful of preset options. This certainly is not all of the product names that we have in here. But one thing that is kind of helpful is that as you look at each of these, you can see there's a tiny gray number off to the right. So if you are trying to find something specific, you'll know right off the bat how many products will fit that variable when you end up choosing it. So for right now, we're gonna skip those because we wanna use gift cards. So I'm just gonna type in gift card. And then as I was typing, it popped up. So we've got that variant here. And now we've gone from 215 to 212 products. And that's how you can utilize different filters to create and statements to say, I want something to fit one variable. So my price needs to be less than $500 and the name needs to not contain gift card. So I'm not advertising gift cards in this product set. If for whatever reason you decide later on that you're fine having gift cards be part of this product set, you can come over here and click on the trash can and it'll remove this specific value from your product set filters. But I'm gonna leave it for the time being. You can then also add additional filters to your heart's content to make sure that you're advertising only the products that you want in this specific product set. For right now, I'm gonna keep it as just these two. The next piece I wanna talk about is this filter that's up here where it says match items for all of the following rules. This is going to be where the and statement comes from and why we are getting down to this 212 product because we have a price less than $500 and the product name does not contain gift card. We can click on this drop down, and the only other option we have available says at least one. When we click on that, you'll notice that the operator here changed. It is no longer and, it is now an or statement saying that something has to have a price that is less than $500 or the name does not contain gift card. You'll then notice down here that the product number went way back up to 694. This entire product set only has 695. So that means there is one item that is a gift card for over $500 in this account. So just remember, depending on how you want to narrow down your items in this specific product set, make sure that this operator up here is set up the way that you want it to be so that you're using either an and or an or statement, because as you can tell, 694 products is very different than 212 products. Earlier when I created this product set, I gave it the name of rugs because that's what I want the end product to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the price variant. And then I'm going to adjust the name variant. I'm gonna get rid of gift card and I'm going to change the operator to contains. And now I'm gonna just type in rugs. As I filtered that, you can see that there are 82 that fit with some individual names that have different variants. Some of them have seven, nine, one variant. I'm just gonna click rug. So now we have 82 products in this product set and it's all of the rugs that are tied in this account without any other variables in place. Now that I'm finished with my filters, I'm just gonna click create. Now that my product set has been created, you can see that it shows up over here in the left navigation as just rugs with the 50 items, 82 variants that we have in there, but we still have the main Shopify dynamic Facebook ads product set as well. And this is how you can easily navigate between the two. Then on the right, we have the rugs catalog set. We have all the different products that are available within that catalog set. As I mentioned earlier, there are two different ways to create a set. So let's go really quickly over here and I'll show you how to do the manual version. Just click create set, scroll down to manual, and that'll open up a window that looks quite a bit different than the other ones. You'll notice here there are no different filters, no different areas where you can select different values, no operators, anything like that. The only couple of options you have are to give it a name and then you can search the catalog. Then down below, you'll see all of the different products listed and if it has any variants, there will be a tiny arrow here. So if we open that up, you can see the different variants within individual products, but you can only check a box next to each product. Every time you check this box, that adds the product over into your product set over here on the right. And that is the extent to how you use manually created product sets. So let's say that I wanted to create something similar to the rugs catalog that I just created. I would come up here to search catalog. I could type in rug, for example, and now we filtered down for all of the rugs that are available in the account. 
Remember there are 82 different rug variants in here. So to create these and add different things to my product set, I would have to just check each individual box to add all of the rugs to the product set. For this account, clearly rug is available in the name so I can use it as a filter, but think about all of your products if you don't have logical naming convention or different values available in the product feed, it can be quite a pain in the butt to come in here and select each individual product that you want to add to a different catalog. So depending on how you want to set up these catalogs and what information you want available, I really encourage you to make sure that you're using all of those different product fields within your product catalog. So when you import it into Facebook, you can utilize those different filters and not have to go through and manually create product sets like this. That said, there are some good use cases for manual product sets. Think about maybe if you have a holiday collection, whether it's for the typical winter holiday season, or if it's something around like a Memorial Day sale or something like that. If you don't have extremely clear cut product sets for that, like the rugs example that I did earlier, maybe you have a couple of items on sale in every department, it might make sense to go in and just manually check the products that you have on sale to put them into that holiday collection and then advertise them all at once. Depending on how your sales go throughout the year and whether products go in and out of sale on a regular basis, it might not make sense for those values to be tied directly into the product fields that could be used for filters. So if that sounds like something that might be a good fit for you, maybe stick to manually creating product sets for the time being. Once we've created our product set, now it's time to start leveraging it in campaigns. The easiest way to do that is to make sure that you have selected the product set that you want and you're in the right one, which we are currently in rugs, and then come up over here to the top right and click advertise set. You then choose the account that you want. We're gonna stick with the one we're in. And then you'll see that we're in sort of this mini builder of Facebook campaigns. It's already starting us off to create a new campaign for catalog sales. And it's already chosen the catalog that we wanna use, which is the Shopify product catalog. Remember all of the product set targeting lives at the ad set level. So you wanna make sure that you've only chosen the right catalog at this stage, and then we can choose the product set in the ad set level. If you wanted to create an entirely new campaign, you would click continue, but you'll see up in the top, you can also use an existing campaign if you want to. So here we would go in, find the campaign that we wanted to use in this field, and then we would click continue to apply this product set into a new ad set within the existing campaign. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We can give the ad set a name. I'm just gonna give it the rugs placeholder name and click continue. And now we have a new ad set added into the existing campaign. Just ignore the error. It has to do with a cost cap setting on this campaign, it has nothing to do with the product set itself. At this point, this is what the ad set creation step is going to look like. Even if you build something from scratch in your Facebook campaigns and you didn't come from catalog manager. So if you just went in, clicked add new ad set, it would start you off looking like this. You would give the ad set a name and then you would click promoted products. Unfortunately, Facebook actually didn't carry over the specific catalog product set that I had selected of rugs, which is quite frankly, a little bit of a glitch. Usually it carries over what we wanted to, but this is probably a good thing for you to notice when it messed up because you need to make sure that you're advertising only the product set that you wanted. Right now it's defaulting to Shopify dynamic Facebook ads product set, which again is not the one that we were looking for. So you can come in here, click the down arrow, and now we can find the rug catalog set that we wanted to use. And that's pretty much how you apply your product sets to the ad set. You can then scroll down here and start to customize the audience. Right now, this is in a retargeting campaign, so I would leave this retargeting setting. But if you wanted to also utilize this catalog product set for prospecting, you can shift over to find prospective customers and you'll then be prompted to enter all of the different audience filters that we utilize for Facebook ads. We recently launched a video that goes through all of the different Facebook targeting options that are available. So if you're interested in that, check out the video in the upper portion of your screen right now. But otherwise, you're off to the races advertising the catalog product set that you've created for your account. Whether or not you utilize any of the custom filters, or if you ended up needing to choose all of your products manually, make sure that you're trying to match the different product sets with the right target audience so that you're not advertising products that don't make sense to certain users and that you're going to get the best returns for the budget that you're going to spend on Facebook and Instagram ads. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.